Hi, this is Irene. I'm from the University of Calgary. In this video, I'm going to be going over the technique of evaluating the inferior vena cava or IVC using point of care ultrasound, how to interpret the exam, how to differentiate between the IVC and the aorta, and lastly, some of the measurement issues that are important to keep in mind when you do your scans. So there are a number of ways to get the view. Um, I typically start with the uh, longitudinal axis, but uh, just to show you, there are different ways of doing this. Um, folks might prefer doing a transfer scan where you identify the spine, the IVC, and the aorta. Once you've identified that, um, what you can then do is to rotate uh, the transducer marker towards the head on the IVC and then turn that into a longitudinal view like so. Um, another alternative that some folks prefer is to actually do a start with a sub costal view of the uh, heart and then once you've identified the right atrium over here then you can kind of rotate your transducer to follow the IVC into uh, the right atrium and then kind of manipulate and rotate and optimize your image so that you get the IVC uh, view that way. Um, so it doesn't matter to, to you how you actually do the image as long as you get a, a decent image and that you're really uh, getting the measurements that you need. Um, and as I indicated, I my personal preference is to just start with the uh, longitudinal axis with the transducer marker towards the head. Um, and I typically put it to the patient's right a little bit because the right on the right hand side of the patient would be the IVC, a little bit to the left would be the aorta, so I would start in this view and then slide a little bit towards the patient's right. And what you would get is an image that might look like that. Um, and uh, where you're going to train your eyes to look into is the at approximately the junction of the right atrium with the IVC and then at one to two centimeters from that. And again, depending on what textbooks you read, you will find different landmarks that are being advocated to, uh, to be used to do your measurements or eyeballing. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, I'm going to adhere to the recommendations by the American Society of Echocardiography, uh, the guidelines from 2015, and and uh, and for this uh, the purpose of this video, I'm going to use the recommendations, which is one to two centimeter from the junction. And from that same set of guidelines, I have uh, these est estimates of the right atrial pressure. Um, and at that point, if the diameter of the IVC is less than 2.1 centimeter and it collapses more than 50%, then the estimated right atrial pressure is 3 millimeter mercury. Um, if the IVC, on the other hand, is greater than 2.1 centimeter and collapses less than 50%, then the estimated right atrial pressure is 15 millimeter mercury, and then anything in between is 8 millimeter, 8 millimeter mercury. And of course, it's, um, you know, it's right atrial pressures are not discrete numbers uh, such as 3, 8, and 15. So there's, in fact, there's typically a nice range of numbers that the patient can actually um, exhibit, and these ranges are displayed here. But for in all intents and purposes, these are reasonable numbers to memorize. Uh, the collapsibility index is uh, measured as follows. You take the maximum diameter of the IVC, which in a spontaneously breathing patient is typically in the expiratory phase, minus the minimum diameter, which again is typically in the inspiratory phase, divided by the maximum diameter. Uh, present that as a percentage, and that will give you the collapsibility index. So in this video here, um, the IVC diameter uh, is, and again, every screen, every ultrasound machine displays it differently, but the total depth of this uh, video is 11 centimeters, so that's 5, 10, 11 centimeters. So each of these is actually 1 centimeter markers. So if my little ruler here is approximately 2.1 centimeter, what I'm going to do is uh, rotate that at approximately two centimeter, 1 to 2 centimeter from the junction of the right atrium. What you'll see here is that my um, IVC is just a little under 2.1 centimeter, uh, but it collapses less than 50%, so the estimated right atrial pressure in this case is approximately 8 millimeter mercury. If, on the other hand, you have a patient that looks like that, um, and the again, the uh, 2.1 centimeter ruler is now displayed here, and I kind of rotate that back, and what you'll find is that uh, in this setting, the diameter is greater than 2.1 centimeter, and it collapses very little, uh, and definitely much less than 50%, so the right estimated right atrial pressure in this case would be approximately uh, 
uh, 15. So in this last example, the IVC, um, again with my ruler here, is uh, just under 2.1 centimeter and it collapses almost essentially close to 100%. So the estimated right atrial pressure is 3 millimeter mercury. So it's really important to uh, to not start measuring the wrong tube. Um, in this instance, in this clip, what the, the tube that we're looking at is actually the aorta, and there's really no point if you're trying to estimate right atrial pressure to start do your, doing your measurements here. So how do we know that this is the right uh, this is the aorta as opposed to the IVC? Well, there are a number of ways. Um, one. As I alluded to earlier, the IVC is right of midline on the patient, whereas the aorta is a little bit left to the, of the midline on the patient. So if you're the one doing the scanning, where you're putting your transducer should give you a clue as to what tube you're actually measuring. And second, let's just rotate this a little bit here. The IVC goes up into the right atrium, whereas the aorta dives down below the heart um, like so. So I'm going to put the uh, two clips side by side to give you a better sense of what that would look like. So what you see here is that uh, you have the IVC going up into the right atrium and then on the on the panel on the right here you have the IVC diving down below the heart and that should give you a clue that you're looking at the aorta. A couple other things that you can also look at. You can see this is actually double waveform or double or triple waveform as opposed to this which is actually quite pulsatile and um, and, um, and and not uh, quite as obviously uh, triphasic. Um, and then secondly, uh, you can see the branches coming off of it. You've got the hepatic vein here. And then here on this video, you can see right there, that's the SMA coming off of the aorta. Boom, right there. Um, and you don't really get this parallel branch that comes off of the IVC that way. So you can tell from that that that's the SMA um, and there gives you another clue that you're looking at the aorta. Other things if you really want to confirm you can put on pulse wave Doppler and here you can see the aorta uh, being very pulsatile like so. Um, it is technically a triphasic waveform as well but these are pretty pretty marginal and difficult to see without the use of Doppler uh, technology. Uh, but what you can see here is that it's um, not only is it kind of have this like brisk upstroke in appearance, it also doesn't vary with re re respiration. It's the same um, magnitude uh, all the way through. And then if you put on the audio, you can actually hear the pulsatility quite nicely. IVC, on the other hand, um, a is a, quite a bit of a triphasic waveform, and secondly, you can see that inspiration is actually the the magnitude is much smaller. During whereas during expiration, you can see the waveforms actually getting bigger. So there's a lot of respiratory variations uh, to to this, which we would not see in the aorta. So use as many of these. Um, uh, of these uh, differences as you can to try to make sure you're measuring the right tube. Personally, I think that if you can get it showing going into the right atrium, um, then you know only. And, and for me, I think the most useful is uh, this: the right atrium as well as the hepatic vein as confirmation that I'm looking at the IVC. But all the um, all the other parameters are useful. I, again, the IVC is typically on the right aorta on the left. The IVC is thinner wall. The aorta is thicker. The direction we already talked about, the respiratory variation, pulsatility, and the branches we've talked about earlier, and um, use as many of these as are helpful to you. Um, in the last part of this video, I'm going to talk about some of the measurement issues that are very important. Uh, so here you can see that uh, the IVC looks fairly small. Um, and a word of caution is that uh, how you actually obtain the image can be somewhat de deceiving sometimes. So what it looks like is you know, maybe a smallish IVC, but that's because we actually have an image that in its true axis. So anything other than the mid measuring the midline is going to give you a falsely small IVC, and we call that sidewalling. So if you're not actually measuring exactly at its widest uh, diameter, you, you can get a falsely small IVC, and that um, is an incorrect measurement. 
So back to that kind of smallish IVC we saw earlier, if you kind of spend the time to kind of slide it around laterally, you will see that the IVC actually got substantially bigger uh, once you find its true axis. So it's actually important to spend that time to make sure you're measuring the, the uh, correct axis. Secondly, where you place your calipers if you're using that to do the measurements is extremely important. Um, so what you'll find here is that if you, you're not measuring to the true perpendicular to the axis of the IVC, it will give you a falsely large number. So here is 19.76 millimeter, as opposed to actually measuring in its correct axis like so, it's actually smaller than that, so it's 16.95 millimeter. Why this is important, I think most of you are going to sit there and say, well, I'm not going to make that kind of mistake. Why this is important is actually most important in M mode, where you, a lot of machines don't give you the capability of adjusting this uh, angle. You can see an example of that here. This is both of these are on the same patient. So if you're actually measuring uh, the the IVC using the M mode uh, gate that's actually given here, this is the collapsibility that's shown. If you manipulate your image a little bit more, um, and what I'm trying to do here is to kind of move this. You can see that this this distance is very small. And then I've moved this down in order to try to get a bit more of a perpendicular angle. The collapsibility dramatically changes. So M mode is um, uh, in many ways a, a difficult one to use properly. So there are lots of cautions that you need to think about how to use it. And in addition, uh, that's so, so, so that's not the, the angle of the cursor isn't the only problem. You also can see how as the patient breathes in, um, and out, you can see how the, the movement of where you're actually measuring with the M mode dramatically differs. So here you're measuring here during inspiration, and expiration is actually measuring all the way over there. So if you if you kind of, you know, assume that you're measuring the same spot, you actually are not, and the M mode kind of, in some ways, exaggerates those problems. If you're having trouble finding the IVC from a midline uh, that I've shown you earlier because of a lot of bowel gas or if the patient just had a, a midline incision and that's impossible to actually scan anything there. We, you can do what we call a rescue view. So here you're actually doing a right uh, coronal plane, borrowing the liver to try to scan through. So what you have here is the first tube that you're going to encounter is the IVC, and the second tube is going to be farther to the patient's left, and that would be the aorta. So these are not standardized views, and we don't have absolute accurate uh, estimates of right atrial pressure based on this view, um, but it gives you an idea of what the patient might be doing um, in terms of uh, the IVC. Probably the most important word of caution is that the IVC is an estimate of right atrial pressure, which is an estimate of right-sided preload. And as you can imagine, there are lots of conditions uh, listed here that would affect those um, estimates. And um, it's really important that you we don't use the IVC as a clear indication of whether or not the patient needs uh, diuresis versus uh, volume. And in fact, um, I would direct your attention to uh, the issue regarding volume uh, responsiveness. There's a uh, video that we have up on our website. It also can be accessed through the Mass General um, Hospital Emergency Ultrasound website as well. The tutorial's up there um, discussing a little bit more on the issue of volume responsiveness. So take home messages from this short video. Um, when you're imaging the IVC, make sure you get the long axis, uh, confirm the entry into the right atrium. If you do choose to use M mode, be very careful with it. Interrated reliability is actually quite poor uh, with that modality. Uh, when you are doing your measurements or eyeballing, uh, be sure that you are thinking perpendicularly to the IVC axis and slice it well. Make sure you're in midline. Uh, these numbers are quite reasonable uh, and good numbers to memorize, um, as they are helpful. And then not uh, to equate uh, whatever you see on the IVC with volume responsiveness. It's really important that you gather the full history in, on your patient and the, of detailed physical exam that you would normally do and supplement it with additional POCUS findings um, that uh, including lung ultrasound, cardiac ultrasound, etc. Um, and that is very important to reassess and reassess and reassess your patient. 
Thank you for watching this video and keep checking back out on our website for more tutorials. Um, if you have difficulty finding our website, if you put in Calgary IMUS, uh, which is, stands for Internal Medicine Ultrasound, the uh, Google site that shows up is our website.